Hey guys. Good Hope morning. Hope you're having Good morning. a great weekend. Do you guys remember when I showed you in the pantry tour how my red potatoes were starting to sprout? And that's what we're taking care of this morning. They, uh, you know, with Thanksgiving and then my shingles outbreak, I am just now getting to um, managing those. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> but on that note, how's my health? Um, I feel a ton better. Uh, I do notice when I overdo it, like I'm sure I'm going to pay the price this afternoon, the nerves in my back and my arm will get agitated, but um, all the wounds are healed. Um, very little itching anymore, just a little bit, and I'm sure that's just from the healing process. And I feel like I'm definitely getting my energy back, so that's all good. The spots healed up pretty fast on your back. Mm -hmm. And it was even to the point where it was kind of weird because it was like, it was healed and it all went away, but it still felt weird. Yeah. Like the nerves were still being attacked by the shingles virus. Yeah. Am I cutting these okay for you? Yep, perfect. I'm trying to keep them uniform. So um, I'll have a video coming out later this week on what exactly I'm gonna be doing with my potatoes. So stay tuned for that. Um, right now, Todd's just helping me process them. Um, other exciting news this week was it was Dan's birthday. It was on Thursday. Yes. And for probably a month before, I started asking her what did she want to do on her birthday? Did she want a party? And kind of gave her some options of maybe what kids might do in the United States for a birthday party. And uh, she really wasn't interested. And we um, offered to take her bowling. Or yeah, go. go to the zoo to see the lights. Um, invite her friends over for a sleepover. And she's like, no, Mama, I think I just want to go to the movies with my friends. Like, okay, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. I thought that was a terrible idea, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's, this is your one birthday in the United States. We've got to do something. So um, we planned something pretty big. <clears throat> and it didn't necessarily go as planned, though. <laughs> or we should say that we were surprised by her reaction. <laughs> yeah, it was... We basically made her cry. <laughs> yeah, oh no. It was, we'll tell you more about that later today. We have a lot of, a lot of little projects going on today. It's the weekend, so we're gonna take you guys along with us like we normally try to do on the weekends. So Rachel's inside wrapping up her potato project that she's been working on today. I'm gonna take advantage of the warm weather it's almost 50 today. It's supposed to get to a high of 52, I believe. And I'm gonna put up some extra Christmas lights. We have Christmas lights in the front of our house, like around our porch and on the side of our driveway, kind of. But we usually like to put them on this back deck area behind our house every year, just for added effect. And it's a perfect day to do that. This big tree right here behind me is a walnut tree. And every year, walnuts fall from the tree and they'll hit this fence and they'll impale themselves on there and they'll stick there. 
Sometimes they'll stay there all the way until spring. And we've got frosty, brutal, snowball, snowflakes, cookie dough, and that old Scrooge. Firewood, fireplace, sugar plum, jingle bells, and little helpers too. Christmas is just around the corner. Coming up right down the line. Christmas lights are done and I have one more small item. You can see this blue bowl back here. This is a heated dog watering bowl. Cord runs up here. It goes over to our house and plugs in on the outside of our house into a GFI breaker. And there's also one of those um, thermal cube modules that I plug into it. And what it does, what that little thermal cube module does is it only turns on power to this outlet when the temperature drops below 37. So if it's a day like today and it's 50 degrees, there's no sense in heating this water. You're just wasting electricity. So the other day we had something happen and it, it tripped that GFI breaker. And I know they make special little plastic enclosures for outdoor plugs like this. But I don't have any and I'm kind of cheap. <laughs> so what I found works just as well is just take a plastic shopping bag and you can wrap it around your outlets a couple times and then tie it together. What, what are you doing? You checking this out? Huh? Not for you. And it protects it from the moisture just as well, or I don't know if it's just as well, but once I've done this before in the past, I've never had issues again, so. This keeps most of the rain off of it. I can't wait to see the lights in the back. It's always so fun when Todd puts them up outside my kitchen window, and I'm always in the kitchen at Christmas time cooking and stuff. So it's always fun to look out both the front door and the back kitchen windows and see those lights. So I'm making bread and it's been a long time since I've shown you guys how I prepare the bread. So I've already mixed the dough but I'm going to show you how to get a really nice dense sandwich loaf bread if you don't know. So come down here and I'm going to show you. So it's already risen. I just threw some flour down it's somewhat in a rectangle. Now I'm going to roll it out. Rolling bread dough isn't the easiest thing because it always shrinks back up on you. You want to keep it um, a rec as rectangle as you can. A lot of people just, when they make their sandwich bread, they just will kind of make the dough rise in their pan, um, kind of like a ball method. But if you take your bread and you roll it as tightly as you can, pinch those seams down, and then you're gonna roll your, tuck your ends under and you want to lay it. I've got my Pullman loaf pan. Let me grab some lard real quick. I'm just gonna do a quick rub down just a little bit. You don't need a lot. I know these loaf pans are getting a little bit more popular on different um, homesteaders channels. I found it quite a few years ago from Patera and it makes the perfect um, bread loaf pan because it makes a perfectly square loaf of bread. And now I'm going to put the lid on I'm going to leave it cracked just a little bit so I can see it 
And when it's just about, just below the, you know, I'm gonna let it, I guess, double in size in the loaf fan. So it, it'll be a little bit, maybe one inch below the top of the loaf. I'm gonna seal it up the rest of the way and bake it. So let's go ahead and get the oven set to proof. I'll let it rise and then we'll bake it. Pretty darn close to 50 degrees. I know later this afternoon it's gonna, it's gonna hit 50, 51, 52 degrees Fahrenheit maybe. And after today, it's gonna be warm again tomorrow, but it's supposed to rain all day. So I thought today would be a good opportunity to check on my bees. I'm not gonna open my hives other than I'm gonna pull this top piece off and check and see how much sugar is left in all of them. I really don't want to disturb them any more than that. It's not good. It's 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 winter. It's December. So all I'm going to do today is a quick sugar check. Whoa, there's a bee flying around. Unless I had to go potty. Yep. Yeah, another one right here. I'm also going to put a stick in the bottom entrance and make sure it's not plugged up with dead bees or anything like that. There is a lot of dead bees around here. A couple over there, the weak hive. Not so much. So we'll do this, we'll get in, we'll get out really quick, see how things are. Our quilt box looks good. A Little bit of moisture up there, but that's good. That's what we want. That's why it's here. Wow. Yeah, they really cleaned out that sugar. They're gonna need more. That's their emergency food and they went through that much. I'm surprised. Because this box was loaded. That last one I just showed you, that was my strongest hive. I did try to tip the box afterwards and it's still really, really heavy. So nothing here. Okay, so these ones are all down in the bottom still. They haven't touched their food yet. One of the best ways to check your hives going into winter is by weight. Um, so you can just grab your boxes and yeah, it's quite heavy. Some people will actually pick up from the rear or pick up from the front just to judge by weight with, and there's some values that like each box should weigh a certain amount. And I don't remember what those values are. It might be 80 pounds, 60 pounds a piece, something like that. I don't remember exactly, but this one feels heavy. My strongest hive that I showed you first feels heavy as well. So this one's my weakest, by far the weakest hive. This is a single brood chamber. Still a lot of sugar. Don't see a lot of bees. They're probably all here in the center. We're just gonna leave them alone. I'm curious to know why that strong hive ate so much of that sugar already. That is weird because it's super heavy. I just ran back up to the house to get uh, oh no, some more sugar and some newspaper. And since I've opened these guys now, they're all up here. All right, that should be good for now. We will uh, return again at some point, January, February, whenever the temperature will allow. So it's a good thing I came out and checked. If you, uh, you're beekeeping in cold climates like I am, and you get those warm days and you get that 50, 55, 60 degree day in the middle of December, check your sugar stores. Make sure your bees have that emergency food. These ones ate it for some reason, and I don't know why. We'll just call it, it is what it is. Give them more. Carry on. Doing something fun today that we've never done before. I'm gonna make some homemade Hot Pockets for dinner. I've gotten uh, one bread loaf in the fridge. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the little paddle thing? Yeah. Uh, one bread loaf in the oven proofing for just sandwich bread, and then we're gonna make the rest of these into 
Hot Pockets. <laughs> So why don't you tell them about the rest of the Dan's surprise birthday party story. Oh, we started telling you guys that earlier this morning and we never finished. So like Rachel was saying, all Dan wanted to do was to go to the movies yes. with her friends. Yes. And we'll go to the movies after school and that's that. Rachel reached out to some of her friends and mind you, all of all of her closest friends that she has are all also foreign exchange students. So there's a boy from China, a girl from Thailand, a girl from Japan. Taiwan. Taiwan? Not Thailand. Taiwan. Thailand. A boy from Italy, two girls from Brazil. Right. So Rachel started reaching out to these kids on Instagram and said, hey, I know Dan wants to go to the movies with you guys on her birthday and maybe hang out afterwards, but we're going to have a surprise birthday party for her at our house. So when the movie gets done, tell her that you can't hang out. Yeah. Papa's going to go to the mall to pick her up. Your parents are going to pick you guys up and bring you to our house while Papa goes and gets some pizza. And by the time we get back to the house, all of her friends will be here. And we'll surprise her. Yes. And Dan is a woman of control of her own plans. <laughs> <laughs> right. So she was trying to, you know, make all of these birthday arrangements and her friends weren't cooperating. Yeah. And um, she wanted to stay out till seven and like after the movies, like just hang out with her friends. I'm like, no, I'm sorry, but... We have a family party. That's how we do birthdays here. All the families come, comes over and celebrates with you. So we need you home for dinner. So I think she was a little disappointed in that, even though she wouldn't say. And uh, her friends weren't really making a big deal about her birthday. And so... Well, there was even <laughs> a lot of translation issues oh, in the yes. beginning because she sent all of their friends messages about this is the plan. This is what we're going to do. Well, then Dan comes home from school the next day and she's like, yeah, I'm not going to the movies now. My friends said that they can't. Oh, yeah. We're like, that's not what we told you guys. Go to the movies. Yes. Just don't hang out afterwards. That was really challenging to get through the language barriers. But anyway, it all ended up working out good. And I thought, oh, yes, we finally we're going to nail this. And we, um, geez, you're so much better. Well, I'm stronger. Yeah. Gotta put some weight on it. Do mine. <laughs> <laughs> so we got home, we, we stopped and picked up pizza. And she was a little bit suspicious because I bought five large pizzas. And she was like, wow, Papa, we're going to be having pizza all week. I'm like, yeah, it's all right. Well, you played it off that the family was coming over. Cameron was coming and yeah. Nick and Emily was going to come as well. And we got home and Rachel and all the kids were in the house. They had all of the lights turned off. We walked through the front door and Dan was filming because she was going to make a birthday video anyways. Walks in the front door, Rachel flips on all the lights, everybody starts screaming happy birthday. She was so happy. We thought she was, and then she started crying. Yeah, but it was like so overwhelmingly happy for her, she just collapsed onto the ground crying her eyes out for like five minutes. <laughs> yes, I had to pick her up off the floor. <laughs> Go to her room. Redo her makeup. Up. Redo yeah. Her makeup. <laughs> anyway, it was a wonderful surprise, and all the kids stayed till uh, about nine o'clock and just had a wonderful time celebrating Dan's life with her. And I said, "Well, I'm so happy that you had this memory." She loved it. She did. She was. She was talking to me about. I think after the fact about how expectations can often sometimes lead to disappointment. 
and she had these expectations that this is how her birthday was going to go. And when it didn't go that way, she was disappointed. But then the way that it really turned out in the end was overwhelmingly happy for her. Yeah. So I need to get it bigger. Well, we're done. This is how they turned out. Rachel's looks very professionally done with her little crimped edges. I loved Top Pockets when I was growing up as a kid, and now we just can make them homemade. I still eat them sometimes. Do you? <laughs> I buy them sometimes and take them to work for lunch. Yeah. So we'll come back and we'll show you how they turned out. You cook them like the same amount of time you takes to cook bread? Uh, 10 minutes less. 10 minutes less? Yeah, 20 minutes. It turned out really good looking. Heck yeah. Lost some cheese out of a couple of mine. <laughs> I must have not had it sealed very good. I think that one of mine leaked out too. Yummy. Look at that. Hot pocket delight. Yep, good Hot job. Hot pocket. It's no one's here, it's just us. So Rachel put some butter on them when they came out and they look fabulous. I can't wait to eat one. You gonna eat one now? Heck yeah, I'm hungry. Okay, we're gonna go eat. Hope you guys enjoyed your weekend and we will see you soon. Bye guys. Bye bye. Look at that bread. I told you, perfect square sandwich bread every single time. Nice. Good Heck job. Good. Thanks.